pocket full of money and that poor man wants to buy you dinner, let him buy you dinner. Mm -hmm. I'm letting all you poor folks buy me dinner. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, if, you, if you notice on the, the program, the flyer and all that kind of stuff, it said family, friends, and 50 years of fraternity. Family, then friends, then 50 years of fraternity, okay? There's a good reason why it said that. I've been having parties forever. In, in St. Louis, I started having parties because in St. Louis, if you want somebody's cousin and didn't go to the school with them, you didn't get invited to the parties. And you had to pay to come to the party and bring your own bottle and all that stuff. And I said, no, I'm gonna show these folks how to have a party. And the only way you can come to my party is if you're invited. And if you're invited and you come to my party, anything you think you might want will be there. When I was younger, that meant a whole bunch of wild things. <laughs> As I got older, we kind of tamed some of that stuff down. But it, I've always been known to have those kind of parties, and people think that you know it's a party for me, and they always get upset when they see me at the party because I'm always moving. Because the party is for my friends. It's not about me. It's my way of honoring and cherishing my friends. Okay. So for me, when I started thinking about oh, a 50-year party. The first thing that came up with Brother Stu Bailey said, you know, Brundy, you ain't gonna let us have, our, have your party. You're gonna have to do it your own self because we won't be able to do it right. And, and he was right about that. <laughs> you know, I, I, I love the chapter, but there just was no way our chapter, even on their best day, could give the kind of party that I would wanna have thrown for me on the But I also know that I can't do those kind of things by myself. Okay. When I first started having parties, birthday parties, and you could have whatever you wanted, there would be no furniture in the house. There would be peach crates. There would be bologna sandwiches and all those other kind of treats that you might want. But that was it. I met Naora at one of those birthday parties. 
she got lucky, a friend who was invited brought her to the party. <laughs> and at that party, there was only like bologna sandwiches and cold cuts, and we didn't even dance and party. We just got our heads bad. That's all it was. Naor and her friends thought that that was not cool and that we should be doing more. So as Naor started working with me and as we got together and started living together and having parties, those parties went like way, 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 way up and turned out to be fantastic events. The only reason we don't do as many up here in Dallas is because you guys won't stay up all weekend like the folks in St. Louis would. <laughs> but because of that background of throwing parties, I knew I wasn't gonna throw no party by myself. And you know, 50 years of me being a capital wasn't gonna get Naora to help me have a good party. So I added that stuff about family and friends. <laughs> to try to get Naora to participate in the party. Thank goodness she bought into it. <laughs> but because mostly it's my family and friends here, she still made sure I paid for most of it. <laughs> but I am so blessed that she helped me to have the party. Because first it's about family and friends, and then my fraternity. I am the proud son of Joseph, Juanita, and Dorothy Vernon. If you're listening closely, I got two mothers. See, God knew I was gonna need a little extra help in life, so I got two. My, my father, I don't know. I wasn't married to my father, so I'm not so sure if he was a great husband, but he was the best father you could possibly have. And I was his first son. And if you know about a father's love with his first son, then you know how lucky and how blessed I was to come and be in that position in that family. But you don't get a chance to choose your family. You're kind of stuck with what you got. <laughs> and I have the best of families. The best of families. You couldn't get better brothers and you couldn't get better sisters. You couldn't get better mothers or better cousins or a better father or any of that. All of them are extremely special and loving to me. They. I have an Uncle Billy who used to always get on me because whenever I go to the funeral, I would say, yeah, we have a dysfunctional family, but we do blah, blah, blah. And he finally said, Mike, you need to quit saying that you're a dysfunctional family. We are not a dysfunctional family. We have half-brothers, step-brothers, all those kind of things, but we don't refer to anybody like that. We're all just family. And it's gotten to the point so that the next generation, the great uncle, great nieces and nephews, they don't have a clue where those separations may or may not be. They just think that Grandpa Joe must have been a hell of a man with all these women, with all these kids. <laughs> they don't know how it turned out. <laughs> but I can tell you a quick story about my family. When I lived in St. Louis in the 80s, I, I had a terrible, terrible event happen to me, one personal event uh, that involved a whole bunch of crazy stuff. A girlfriend committing, trying to commit murder, killing the kid, all kinds of crazy stuff. My name was in the news. It was a terrible time, okay? My friend, my friend came and picked me up. I was at the police station at midnight, and I called my family and said, hey, I've got all this trauma going on, and all this stuff has just happened. That was at midnight. When I woke up at 6 o'clock in the morning, all of my family was there in St. Louis. Mm -hmm. Everybody in my family, except my sister who was in Spain, had come from the East Coast to the West Coast in a matter of six hours to be with me. My father put up with both of his wives in the same house to be with me. You hear that? That's the kind of family I have. When I was at my lowest, they were like the crutches that came and held me up. And I remember Joey coming to me saying, Michael, you know what? You are really lucky and really blessed. Because I had all my friends come around, okay? And those of y'all who know me, I know that I, I can get kind of crazy and come wild and all that stuff. And uh, whatever I do, my folks know and my friends kind of wonder, well, what? And my brother said, you know, you got some darn good friends. And what Joey told me was, you know, when the family is gone, you won't have us here because they stayed with me for a couple of days, but you said they're gonna be gone. And you're gonna to have to rely on your friends. And then I began to realize just how important my friends are. See, my family was just given to me by God, but my friends, we chose each other. 
And I have a saying that you make friends with Kool-Aid and you make Kool-Aid with friends. Mm -hmm. And if you don't understand what that means, it means that you give the best to your friends. And you don't just pass and become good friends, you actively become friends. If you want good friends, don't go looking for friends. Don't go looking for people to be your friend. Just be a good friend. And if you be a good friend, that's how you collect friends. And that's what's happened to me. I've got so, so many friends and so many best friends that I even get confused sometimes that I was that blessed. But not only do I have great friends and great family, but I'm a member of a great fraternity. A great fraternity. When I was 17 and I went to college, I didn't know anything about black fraternities at all. I knew that there were some white fraternities in Florida. I think I saw it on the Mickey Mouse show or something like that, but I, I really didn't know anything about black fraternities. And, and when I got to school, now I'd only been on the yard for two weeks before I got on mine, so I didn't get a chance to see a lot of people pledging or see other Greeks or any of that stuff. And, and if I had, no telling what way I may have went. But most of our, my brothers, they've heard the story and they know the story and I, I really know that authenticity is your best weapon so I don't mind telling y'all any darn thing. But the first time I was heard, they told me the Kappas were having a smoker. I thought they were smoking dope. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and, and when I got there, that, that's not what it was about. <laughs> and, and, and they gave me this scroller manual. They started talking to me about the fraternity and telling me all the values and the things that, were, that the fraternity was about. Now, a lot of people, a lot of people don't buy it. But I bought that shit hook and sinker, okay? I mean, I believed all of that stuff that they said about capitalism. I believed about achievement. I believed that these were smart brothers trying to do things. And when you're 17, 18, I see it with my grandson now. At that age, you're trying to find your way. You're trying to find young men that you can be like, who you can do. And, and it was capitalism. I had some homeboys, Wilbur Brown, Stanley Brown, the, the, and they said, hey, if you can just learn the history, you can be a Kappa too. I said, well, if they can learn that stuff, I can learn it. I graduated being the smartest black kid I knew. I always was, so I knew if they learned the stuff, I can learn the stuff. And I went home and I read that scroller manual from cover to cover. I love Kappa. I want to be a Kappa. I want to be just what all those men were about. And I, you know, Kappa's not about hazing, but I'll tell you guys. You know, I was standing next to Lewis, and they hit Lewis, and Lewis went up so high. <laughs> they called Lewis Little Brother Springs, and I said, I didn't know they were going to be doing this kind of stuff. <laughs> they turned to me, and they started wanting to hit on me. I said, Big Brother, this says on page 47 of this brother's story that there ain't no hazing in Cap out the side. And they said, Scroller, you can't read. <laughs> You know, and, and, and at that time, see what happens for you guys who don't know, if you're online and they ask you a question and you know the answer, but the guy next to you don't know the answer, then it, it didn't count. Matter of fact, it's bad that you knew it and they didn't know it. Now, at, at that time, you know, if everybody don't know it, it don't matter, everybody gonna get punished anyway. You know, but so you have a choice. We just decide that we just won't know it and we'll take the punishment because these are some dumb folks that you played it with. <laughs> or, do you decide to do something different? And my thing always was to do something different. I'm gonna bring the brothers up to my level, not come down to their level. So just because they didn't know the information didn't mean that we were not gonna know the information as a line. No, it meant that we were gonna learn this stuff. And as a line, we were gonna learn it. And we would still take our butt kicking, but we would know our information. I bought into it. I bought into all they said about Kappa Alpha Psi, about achievement. Now, Everybody doesn't do that. And I don't have a problem with that. I know that. I could care less whether every brother wants to be the same kind of capital that I want to be. Doesn't bother me a bit. I don't even care if you want to be a capital. Don't bother me a bit. I got alpha friends here, okay? I got Q friends here. Anybody who knows me knows I could care less. I know the history of all of us. I know we all came from Masons. I know the alphas came first. I know all of that stuff. I know our rituals are pretty much the same. If I really want to, I can tell you everybody's head shaking, everybody's everything. I mean, after 50 years, you know some shit. <laughs> but what I know best, okay, here's what I know best. I don't care if you're a Kappa, Alpha, Sigma, Q, a Baptist, a Catholic, a Hindu, whatever the hell you might be. 
if you really believe those values that you profess and you really live up to that and really work with it. See, it's the belief that makes the difference. See, I believed in what they said Kappas were about. That's what made the difference. I'd have been a hell of a Jew too because I would have believed what those people said. You know, it's the same thing. You know, if you believe it, that's where the power comes from. And then if you act on it also, that's the thing. When, 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 I was in, when I was in Kansas and when I was in St. Louis, brothers would know me because I was the one who would always say, you give your best to Kappa. Not your second best, your best to Kappa. Brothers in New Jersey would hear me say, look, you give your best to Kappa. When a brother wants something from you, don't give him something that you don't want. No, give me the gift that hurts. The thing that you don't want to give away. That's what you give to your brothers. And my brothers will tell you, because they are all here. And they paid tickets and airline tickets and all kinds of things to be here. Which shows you a whole bunch about how they feel about me. And like Brother Brian said, hey, you know, that's a good deal. But it's because I give so much to capital. I'm known here as a, I get the million dollar capital experience because I give more to capital than anybody I know. I have given my mother to my brothers. My mother, when a brother didn't have a mother to talk to when he had a child coming into the world, I gave him my mother. That's how much I love the family. And if you don't want to know why I get so much from the frat, it's because if you give to the frat at that level, if you give to anything at that level, it'll come back to you. Whether it's your family, your church, your organization, whatever it might be, if you give it from here, it'll come back to you. And, and, and that's what I've learned. And that's why I get the million dollar Kappa experience. Nobody gets it better than me being a Kappa. Nobody, because I give more than anybody else I know about being a Kappa. Now, I don't care if any of y'all want to be Kappas, want to be Qs, or whatever. My real thing is that whatever it is that you believe in, that you feel strong about, then be enthusiastic about it. You know, it comes from the inside. That's the spirit. That's the God thing. That's where all that stuff works. And when you apply that stuff, man, you get a hell of a life. And for me, it has been a heck of a journey. You know, I am much too young to be this old. <laughs> I still can go run four miles and get a 10 minute mile in, and I did it four times this week. And I'm so blessed that I can do that because there's so many who can't. I buried at least a dozen people in the last two months. I've had at least 10 people tell me that they couldn't be here tonight because they had died or because of COVID. One of the worst, worst phone calls you can get is when you see one of your friends' names show up on the phone, but it's their son or daughter on the other end because it's got to be bad news. I, I've seen brothers and sisters die who had four or five people show up at their funeral and they may not have made a big impact. I've seen brothers and sisters die who had hundreds of people come to their funerals and they may have made a big impact. But the one thing that I noticed is that they all dead. It didn't matter. You don't get to take none of this stuff with you. And enjoy it while you're here. That's why I have parties. That's why I want to have this celebration. You don't let this kind of stuff go. It's not for me. It's for all of you. I want all of my friends to meet each other, to know each other, because I got some powerful friends. I know some cool people. All of y'all are cool. <laughs> if you don't know it by now, one of the things that you can be guaranteed of when you come to my party, if you don't know anybody, anybody that you meet there will be a cool person. Anybody you meet there will have a conversation with you. Anybody you meet there, you'll find out that they are somebody special. Anybody. And that's all of y'all. You look around. There are doctors, lawyers, Indians. The name of the darn building, that guy's even here. <laughs> you know, we got doctors praying for us. We got people here that got doctors that I didn't even know. We got all kinds of folks, and most of us are still discovering that within Kappa, as well as the world, there's only three degrees of separation. And if you talk to somebody, and they'll talk to somebody, y'all know somebody, we're that connected, we're that kind of a family. And, and I'm so lucky and so proud to just be a part of it.
Now, most of you guys know that uh, if I get a sympathetic ear, I will wear it out. <laughs> I will talk to you guys for days. But I know that there's a party that you guys are waiting for to do, and uh, I think you want to dance a little bit. But first of all, make sure that you guys heard Candace Williams, right? Was she good? Heard the band? Yeah. Stand up, man. Stand up, man. Now, now this, this is Light Entertainment, in case you guys don't know, this is the best local female jazz singer in the city of DFW, okay? So we didn't just bring some bull up here, we got the best, okay? Right. Thank you, Candy. The MC, y'all see how fly that lady is? So I'm stand up, man. This is my pal, okay? Pal. We're pals because we have a special thing at the church that we go attend to, and I was the pal that welcomed her in. She is the top, the best DJ in the city. 105, okay, from the urban, of oh, dope stuff. That's her. Lynn Hayes, I see her. So when you can get the best DJ to come to you, man, you know, you really kicking it there. And she's the MG, MC. She's not even spinning the records. And did the guy spend his brother Legrand? Is he spending some records? Yeah. I said, they wanted to come for the skating parties. They got all kinds of stuff. And as soon as I shut up, he's going to jam with y'all for a long time. But I just wanted to make sure that I acknowledge all the folks who uh, make it possible. And Dr. Tracy, yeah. you know we can't do it without you. Stand up, please. Tracy just uh, got her doctors recently. Uh, I know her long before, we go to the same church, but I knew even before that because I know her from the speaking. And uh, if you get out in the speaking world, she's like, she's the black mentor for anybody that you know who does speak. I don't care what their name might be, she's the star, she's the best. But the brother that's with her, go on stand up sporty. It's the only brother that ever beat me in a speaking contest. Right there. Four kids. From North Carolina all the way. Hey guys, uh, you know I can go all the way around the room and tell you all something special about any and everybody here. But uh, right now I'm going to ask my niece Erica, hey, uh, give me that bag that I gave you back. Now, my niece Erica, she tried to surprise me by coming and all that stuff. She's an AKA, she's young, so 50 years is a big deal to her. But what's even bigger to me and more important to her, is she has just been elected to the school board of Springfield, Illinois. This is But uh, one of the good things about uh, working with uh, Lynn and working with other folks when you don't think you know it all is that they give you all kinds of ideas. So the reason that you guys got gifts and prizes is because Lynn had good ideas because she's done this before. You know, the reason that you got good food is because they already thought about all that kind of stuff. You know, the, the same thing with the, the disinfectant, and et cetera, et cetera. The main reason that you're having a good time is because Nayor and I throw a hell of a party. But I said Nayor and I throw a hell of a party. Right? Come on up here, Nayor.
Hey folks, uh, I would love to just talk and talk to you guys about it. Uh, let's party a little bit. If you haven't met somebody, make sure you meet everybody in the place. Make sure you go talk to my mama. She's over in the red jacket. And uh, brothers, uh, come on up so we can sing the hymn. And uh, ladies, this might be a good time to prepare to take pictures and all that stuff. We're going to sing the hill, take a picture, stop all this stuff, and go party. Hey. So, let's go. Come on, brother. Come on, come on. Right over there. Right over there. That's like you said. Oh, I'm just, yeah. No, you're fine. You're fine.
And, and we're going to take a picture. So y'all line up and get a picture. Louis Martin? Thank you. And if you agree, uh, the plaques are the same. Read the plaques, you got young guys. Carl Townsend, 50 year membership recognition. In recognition of achievement, brotherhood, and a commitment to the high ideals of Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated, your success and example serve as an inspiration to us all. You have been our friend, brother, mentor, and confidant, and continue to this day. Thank you for being our brother. May it side chapter. Presented right, right. January 29, 2022. Right. 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 This is for John Williams. And you know, last but not least, you know the case. Thank you, everyone. Thank <laughs> you.